Neil from BevNet here. We're here at the uh, Long Beach Convention Center for KombuchaCon. I'm joined right now by uh, a friend of the BevNet family, Justin Prock now from Greenberg Traurig. Uh, Justin does a lot of work with um, food and beverage brands on uh, compliance and regulatory issues. Justin, what brings you here today? Live at KombuchaCon. Uh, I'm excited to be here. Uh, I've uh, done some work with uh, some of the kombucha companies here at the show. Um, I'm going to be giving a presentation tomorrow with Dinah Trout from HealthAid on labeling issues for uh, kombucha products and just trying to get in the right frame of mind for Super Bowl 50. I'm wearing my Broncos orange and blue uh, shirt here and uh, ready for the Super Bowl. I hope uh, those words come back to haunt you after we uh, publish <laughs> this video. Um, you know, give us a little sneak peek of your presentation tomorrow. What are some of the labeling issues, you know, specific to this industry? Sure. I mean, th there are, you know, the first and most important thing for any beverage company, whether it's kombucha, whether it's, uh, you know, juice, whether it's anything, is you have to make sure your label is compliant because it's not just the FDA, it's not the TTB, it's, I say it every time, I know Ray's heard it a million times, uh, it's the private class action plaintiff lawyers in California, in other words, looking for everything that you say about your label. And, uh, you know, there's some companies here right now that are under uh, class action lawsuits for, uh, from plaintiff lawyers over things like uh, sugar content, alcohol content. Uh, so we're going to be talking a little bit tomorrow about what needs to be on the label and some of the focus from both the FDA and others, things like using the word healthy when you make claims. Uh, kind Nutrition Bars got hit with a bunch of class actions earlier this year after a warning letter from the FDA over using healthy. And healthy is a very specific term where you have to meet specific criteria like three grams or less of fat, three grams or less of saturated fat. And if you don't know that when you're making those claims, you put yourself at risk. So we'll talk a lot about making sure someone who knows what they're doing is reviewing your label and then the types of things uh, that you can and can't put on there. And you were saying to me uh, earlier that I found really interesting, you said Made in the USA is another one of those labels that you have to be very careful about using. This is something that I've talked about at a few of the different BevNet shows and to clients over the last couple of years, but it hadn't really taken off. And now we've seen in the last five or six months some major companies uh, getting hit with class action lawsuits where it, uh, their label says made in the USA and under the FTC guidance made in the USA means it's not only finally manufactured in the USA but all of the parts of the product are also from the USA so in the context of a food or a beverage plaintiff lawyers have taken that to mean that it means all the ingredients must also be from the USA so if you've got a product that has things like guarana or um, other types of ingredients that aren't grown in the USA and you're making just a bold made in the USA claim, it's likely that some point of lawyer might take a look at it. So advising a lot of clients now to make a qualified claim, something like made in the USA with ingredients from around the world or made in the USA with awesome foreign and domestic ingredients, but something to distinguish that uh, the ingredients might not be uh, because we've seen lawsuits and even if you win that lawsuit, it's still a cost of time and of course money to attorneys and others uh, to get rid of those lawsuits. All right. And uh, moving on from, I guess, from the plaintiff's attorneys, if we were to talk about, you know, the TTB and the FDA, I've seen kind of over the last year, like a renewed focus on the issues surrounding kind of alcohol levels in kombucha. You know, I'm not, you know, sure how familiar you are with kind of everything that happened in 2010 when Whole Foods pulled a bunch of kombucha off, kombucha off the shelves. But what's been the evolution kind of of this issue and where does it stand today compared to, you know, where it was five years ago? It's an interesting, I mean, it definitely is a big issue in the industry and I would say it's still somewhat unclear as to where it is. Um, testing is a big issue. Uh, you know, I know the American Herbal Products Association did a series of webinars on the testing. Um, you know, TTB recently issued a new guidance on kombucha and the difference between kombucha, which is, you know, under half a percent or over half a percent of alcohol, because if it's over half a percent, 
than it is an alcoholic beverage product regulated by the TTB. So, of course, the testing of the alcohol and where in the process you're testing it um, is important. And companies need to be aware that it has to be under the half percent at every stage of the uh, process. And um, so uh, having proper testing and really focusing on that is, is a big component because that is what some of the plaintiff lawyers are looking at. They had some lawsuits over that, some lawsuits over sugar content, which again related to what type of testing is proper. And, you know, it's still a, a, a growing and emerging industry. So these types of issues are still not totally clear on what is the proper testing method, what is the proper sugar method. I know here at KombuchaCon um, that uh, they're going to be talking about that and at least trying to get a industry perspective and common ground as to what the industry believes is the proper testing so that um, so that they can have a, a common answer to that question when people ask about it. Yes, it seems like, um, you know, and events like this kind of speak to that, that there, that companies uh, have really taken kind of a proactive approach in kind of addressing this uh, in, you know in a collective fashion like you know with, with how KBI has but uh, you know 0.5 percent uh, or above I'm ready to go try some kombucha so uh, Justin thanks for uh, taking some time to chat with us today all right thank you